It is so easy to sit back and criticize the Biden administration's handling of the debt ceiling situation as long as you don't know the people in the White House working on it. I have publicly speculated about what the White House should do myself, but never confidently. I've gone back and forth on whether the president should use the authority implicitly granted to him in the 14th Amendment of the Constitution to simply ignore the debt ceiling legislated by Congress when it conflicts with the constitutional mandate to pay our debts. Here's my latest bright idea that I offered on Friday on Molly Jungfast's podcast, Fast Politics. I would say if you were going to use the 14th Amendment power, the power that people believe resides there, I would have announced it a while ago. I might have even announced it in the State of the Union address and just say the debt ceiling as currently legislated will intersect you know, with the debt at some point later this year. And I want this Congress to know that absolutely under no circumstances will we default on the debt because I will, if Congress does nothing, I will take the action, executive action necessary to authorize the extension of additional debt. And then your no negotiation position, I think, uh, my guess is, becomes even stronger because you're saying to them, look, I don't care if you don't legislate anything. And you're saying it to them six months ahead of time. I think there's a chance it would have changed the dynamics of this. And the other thing about it that makes it the kind of thing you do want to say six months ahead of time is there are market issues with it. You know, the when you say we're going to continue to extend the debt and expand the debt, even though we've crossed the line, the number that's in the debt ceiling, the buyers of that new debt, right, the buyers of the new treasury bonds that would be sold under that condition would rightfully demand a higher interest rate because this debt is being issued under a condition we've never seen, except back before there was ever a debt ceiling, which is like, it's only been around for less than 100 years. That was Friday. This morning, I changed my mind again, because of one thing that guides my thinking about this that I know does not guide the thinking of any other public commentators on the debt ceiling. And that thing is that I know that I am not smarter about this than Steve Reschetti. And I know that I am not smarter about this than Joe Biden. I know that for an absolute fact in a way that White House reporters can never know it. Because when I worked on the Senate Finance Committee, which has jurisdiction over the debt ceiling, I was working with Steve Reschetti almost every day, because he was then working in the White House for President Clinton. And I was constantly in Senate legislative meetings and strategy meetings in those days that included the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee at the time, Joe Biden. Jay Carney was a White House correspondent then for Time magazine. And Jay Carney thought that he knew President Clinton Jay Carney thought that he knew President George W. Bush when he covered him in the White House. And those presidents knew Jay Carney's name, and he really thought he knew them. But when Jay Carney crossed the line from reporter to White House staffer in 2009 to work for Vice President Biden and then become President Obama's press secretary, Jay Carney discovered that he knew next to nothing about the politicians and the presidents that he used to cover as a reporter. When the doors close in the room where the governing decision is going to be made and you're inside that room, that's where you discover how good someone is at governing, how good they are at the politics of governing. And every time I was in that room with Senator Joe Biden, he was great. He used his expertise and authority when he could, and he listened carefully when others in the room knew more than he did about the issue of the day. And when I was trying to pass the Clinton agenda through the Senate Finance Committee, and Steve Reschetti was the Senate strategist in the White House Office of Legislative Affairs, I never had a smarter strategy than Steve Reschetti did. I had a smarter strategy than some other people in the White House and in the Senate, but not Steve Reschetti. 
And so whenever I have felt like last week, I have a better idea than Joe Biden and Steve Reschetti seem to have about how to deal with the debt ceiling. I never really trust that idea. I said on that podcast on, on Friday, in the end, we may all agree that Joe Biden handled the debt ceiling situation perfectly. It might turn out that way. Here's my new theory about why that just might be true. And it is only a theory and let's not be surprised if I change my mind about this tomorrow. I have shared a lot of the strategic criticisms of Joe Biden for saying for months and months that he would not negotiate on the debt ceiling and then ended up negotiating on the debt ceiling. I have been disappointed that Joe Biden didn't voice more potential support for using the 14th Amendment and the presidential power implied therein to override the debt ceiling, even if the Congress does not pass an increase in the debt ceiling. But here's what I came up with this morning. When I assigned myself the task of thinking through the debt ceiling situation on the assumption that Joe Biden and Steve Reschetti, who is the president's most experienced negotiator on the debt ceiling, know exactly what they're doing and they're doing it for good reason. So with that as my guide, I noticed that Joe Biden insisted for months that he was not going to negotiate on the debt ceiling, but he would be willing to engage in the normal budget negotiations with Congress that he has to participate in every year. Now Joe Biden is engaged in a negotiation over the debt ceiling and the budget at the same time. And Kevin McCarthy is calling that a victory, just the negotiation he's calling a victory. Jake Sherman reports on what Speaker Kevin McCarthy told Republican members of Congress this morning behind closed doors. He said, I need you to all hang with me on the debt limit. That is the most important thing he said. He desperately needs the Republicans to support him on the debt limit. And Kevin McCarthy knows that close to half of the Republicans in that room are functionally crazy when it comes to governing. So he has to speak to them very, very carefully. And he said, we are nowhere near a deal yet. And that's what they always say until it's an hour before the deal. Then he said, I've told the president three things. First, no clean debt limit. Well, we already knew that. That's why there's a negotiation. And there's Kevin McCarthy this morning trying to get credit from the crazies in his party that he told President Biden, no clean debt limit. And he told the president, no raising taxes. We already know that too. We've known that all year. So those first two of the three things Kevin McCarthy said mean absolutely nothing. And that's how he's playing tough with the Republicans in the House, trying to appear tough to them, to get up there and say he's demanding these three things of the president and the first two don't mean a thing. And the last one was simply, quote, spend less money. That is the softest possible formulation of a Republican demand to cut spending that he possibly could have said. Spend less money. Not cut domestic spending by 25 percent. Nothing drastic in that phrase. Spend less money. And then Kevin McCarthy told his Republicans, remember, where we were. They refused to negotiate. Kevin McCarthy wants credit from the crazies in his party that he got Joe Biden to negotiate. He wants them to think just having the, the negotiation is a victory. And Joe Biden has handed them that victory. And he needs, Kevin McCarthy needs them to think that having the negotiation is a victory because Kevin McCarthy knows He's not going to be able to obtain from Joe Biden anything close to the demands of the crazies in the Republican Party. Kevin McCarthy then said, they made a, a mistake not to negotiate. Let's stay strong together. And then Jake Sherman tells us that Kevin McCarthy also showed a video with a chronology of Democrats saying they wouldn't negotiate. In other words, Kevin McCarthy spent that meeting stressing to his Republican members that they already have a victory just because they have a negotiation. Joe Biden gave them that negotiation and he gave up nothing in giving that negotiation. Later today, Kevin McCarthy was asked, what he was willing to give up 
in the negotiation, and he said, we are going to raise the debt ceiling. In other words, raising the debt ceiling is a concession to the Democrats in Kevin McCarthy's view, which is, of course, ridiculous, and Kevin McCarthy knows it. But he, but he does have enough Republican members of the House of Representatives who understand that raising the debt ceiling is necessary. But those same Republicans have been willing in the past to shut down the government completely over budget negotiations and surely would be willing to have another government shut down in October of this year over budget negotiations when the new fiscal year begins. So we have all been portraying Kevin McCarthy as using the debt ceiling to get what he wants from Joe Biden. But what if it's the other way around? What if Joe Biden and Steve Reschetti are using the debt ceiling to get what they need from Kevin McCarthy? It is very clear that Kevin McCarthy and most Republicans in the House of Representatives are afraid of defaulting on the debt. They do not want that to happen. They recognize that it could be economically catastrophic and they could be blamed for the cat catastrophe. And remember, none of the House Republicans will feel that way in September as the fiscal year is ending and the government is going to have to shut down if they don't pass a new budget, they won't worry about that because they've all done that before. They've all happily forced the government to shut down and they didn't lose elections over that. No Republican will ever lose their seat over shutting down the government. They know that after a government shutdown, everyone is pretty much made whole. Any federal workers who weren't paid during the shutdown, get their back pay, and it's all forgotten very quickly. Not so with the debt ceiling. Kevin McCarthy knows that defaulting on the debt could destroy him. And so Joe Biden has the debt ceiling to force Kevin McCarthy into a negotiation over budget issues that could head off any possible government shutdown later this year. And if Joe Biden can make that work, then that is a much better outcome than using the 14th Amendment and simply declaring the debt ceiling null and void and engaging in some kind of court battle for at least the rest of the year over any of the debt issued through presidential power instead of congressional power. And in September, President Biden, even if he did that with the 14th Amendment, would still face the possibility of a government shutdown over budget issues. What if President Biden can solve both of those problems now, using the leverage of the debt ceiling against Kevin McCarthy? And yes, it would involve some kind of spending cuts because the Republicans do control the House of Representatives. And at no time in our history has a president and a Senate controlled by the other party been able to force the House of Representatives to do what they want them to do. There must be compromise with the Republicans eventually in the House of Representatives with the budget on budget issues. And Joe Biden has leverage in that kind of compromise now with the debt ceiling that he will not have in September. It is entirely possible that if I were working in the White House tonight as Steve Reschetti's assistant, I would believe that the president has full constitutional authority through the 14th Amendment to ignore and override the debt ceiling when it comes into conflict with paying our debt. And at the same time, I could be advising the president to not use that power and instead use the debt ceiling to force Kevin McCarthy into a much more pressurized version of a budget negotiation and a budget agreement, one in which Kevin McCarthy actually is able to proclaim to his Republican members of the House that just getting Joe Biden to negotiate is a victory in and of itself. That's it. That's my theory of the case, working on the assumption and the fact that Joe Biden and Steve Reschetti are smarter than I am about the debt ceiling. Make a deal on some spending cuts with Republicans now using the debt ceiling as leverage against Kevin McCarthy in the same way that Kevin McCarthy thinks he is using the debt ceiling as leverage against Joe Biden. 
and use that agreement to try to avoid a budget negotiation in September in which Joe Biden will have much less leverage. What you have just heard is guesswork, but so is everything else you have heard from everyone who has not ever been in the room in debt ceiling negotiations. I've made no attempt to talk to Steve Reschetti about this, and I know Joe Biden is not exactly available to explain all this to me, but I do know Steve Reschetti and Joe Biden know everything I know about the debt ceiling and about the Constitution and more, much, much more. And I know they are the most experienced negotiators in the history of Democrats in the White House in debt ceiling and budget negotiations. Democrats have their very best team on the field against the very craziest team that has ever been on the field. I have absolutely no confidence about what happens next, but if I were forced to place a bet, I would bet on the best team 